Hello guys, this video will show you how you can get this super clean, super crisp type of detail in ZBrush even from unclean topology with triangles and guns and things like that. But real quick guys, if you're looking for what I consider to be the best 3D modeling tutorial on the internet, I recommend checking out my Udemy course. It's got tutorials on Blender, 3ds Max, CAD programs such as Plasticity and Moai 3D and a lot of ZBrush as well. So if you want to master a variety of programs to really bring your skills up to the next level and master 3ds Max, Blender, ZBrush, and Plasticity, be sure to check out that course. Link is in the description. Let's continue. So let me go ahead and press Ctrl Z to return back to the original sphere, or I can press comma and just open up this uh, default Z sphere right here, this little mesh, which I use to start off many of my works. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, turn off DynaMesh. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, subdivide once and just delete that. All right, so now what you can do is you can hold control and kind of just create the area where you want your detail to take place. So something like that. Then I will go in here and just fill it in. What we can also do is just be a little bit sloppy at first and then you can kind of subtract uh, more cleanly. You can also go ahead and hold control and use, for example, mask curve. So control alt, get this kind of detail as well. But let's stick with just a mask pen for now. All right, so I'm holding down control alt to remove some areas. All right, let's get something like that. So I'm gonna press control W, that's the hotkey for make it a separate poly group right here. All right, next we go into edge loop open this up and we're going to use group loops now by default it gives us a ton of groups here which we may not need so i'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to one maybe turn down the polish value a little bit here so depending on what the polish value is is how smooth it'll make this all right now that we've got this i'm gonna go ahead and hold down Control alt and left click on this Control and click to inverse my selection since nothing is or I should say to inverse my mask. Since something is masked, it's gonna mask off this whole area. Control shift click to undo that. We've now got this happening here. We're gonna press W, E, or R to switch to the move, scale, and rotate. And by default, this gizmo 3D is on, which can be a very useful thing, but for this demonstration, I'll turn on, turn it off, and we get this thing right here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and you can left click on the surface, just tap on the surface to orient your gizmo to that surface, this little uh, transpose thing. You can press these buttons, click on them to change the orientation. So now if I move using the center one, this point is gonna move like this. So that can be kind of cool. If we move using this outer one, uh, we get this kind of thing happening here. Also kind of cool. If we move using the lower one, we get this really cool cutaway effect happening here which can just produce some really cool effects depending on where, you know, you can produce, uh, you know, this for example, or if we keep moving that, it's gonna produce uh, this. Let's control Z, let's reposition it right here. And so now let's do it. As you can see, really cool cutaway effect happening right here. All right, we can now hold control, make an empty selection to clear the mask. But notice we still get some wobbles happening right here. Well, we just go into deformation, polish by features or polished by groups. And notice how it even creates this kind of cool effect right here, which probably may want, probably may not want that. So you can just go ahead and use smooth to kind of, uh, kind of smooth that out. So just like that, guys, we get this really cool effect right here. Now, what you saw previously, and you know, you can, you can uh, subdivide this and smooth it further if you want like a more, uh, you know, more soft result like this. Now, what I showed you previously, let me just, uh, so this this cutaway effect guy is really cool right here. Really useful for some fancy hard source detailing. But what you saw during the video, in order to get that, I just went ahead and, uh, and you can also use scale to scale it like so. So you can kind of uh, scale it. You can also rotate it as well. That's really useful for rotation. All right, but so if we use scale, we can scale like this and then press W for move and kind of move it like that. All right, clear the mask. Once again, polished by features or polished by groups. 
In this case, looks like Polish by Futures gives me a nice result. And just like that, guys, you get the super crisp ZBrush detail. And so what's cool about this is that because of this clean topology, you can do some Z model action here as well. So you can, for example, uh, insert loops through here. And then you can, for example, use Q mesh poly loop. And so you can kind of, let's see, poly loop that right there. You know, we can also throw in some good old zero measure action into here. So we're going to go into zero measure, keep groups. Uh, let's do turn down adaptive size. All right, let's go ahead and use this. All right, that just makes Z model more responsive because if it's too detailed, it's going to not really work that well. So we can do some cool things here as well. So we can go ahead and use dynamic subdivision. And so guys, look at that. Really, really cool things happening here with ZBrush. Alright guys, I hope this technique helps you out. Thank you for watching and take care.